It's time for Real Estate 101 with the Carrie Brown team from Realty Executives Preferred Advisors. Good Sunday morning to you. This is Carrie Brown, broker owner, Realty Executives Preferred Advisors, and you're listening to Real Estate 101. As you know, our show is not 100% just about real estate. Uh, this particular show, we're going to be talking with Jim Garrison of State Farm. Good morning, Jim. Hey, good morning, Carrie. How are you doing today? Doing good. Um, about different things that you should be thinking about, number one, before you buy a home, um, even as young as you know the, your first job and investing and, and ways to build your for retirement so that you're not counting on Social Security, um, different things along those lines so that you have a plan going into think, um, into buying a house first off and then you know your long-term goals. So whenever we sit down with a client, we go through budget. You can often, and actually most of the time, you're typically pre-approved for more than what you should spend on a house. And we really want to make sure that we stress a budget because you could be house poor. I mean, we joke about it all the time, but it is truly a reality. I know whenever my son bought his first house, which was recently, uh, 22 years old, it was a really good buy. We knew we were going to have to do some work going into it, but... Whenever he was looking at his budget, what he was approved for and what he should spend were two totally different things. Um, so we looked at his budget and said, hey, do you want to eat? And, you know, I want you to be able to have some money to save at the end of each month so that you actually have money to put somewhere. Um, so when people think about realtors, unfortunately, they think, well, they just want a lot of commission. They're going to put me in a house I can't afford. They're going to send me houses I can't afford. We take a totally different concept from that. We genuinely want to make sure that we don't see you on a foreclosure list. We want to make sure that we don't financially break you. Um, So we really stress, what is your budget? What can you truly afford? Um, And then we set, you know, realistic parameters. So what would be your advice to a kid starting their first job, how they can be setting themselves up for their future? Carrie, thanks so much for that question because I'm right in the midst of this at a personal level. My oldest son is just ready. He's uh, completed four years of college, and he's going to take his engineering degree to Kansas City. And matter of fact, he's going to start work on Monday. So we've really had some of these same conversations in our household. And he's, uh, you know, he was, uh, he got through college, didn't have a, a burdensome amount, a huge amount of loans, fortunately. So it's it's manageable. And we've talked about budget a lot because going from that college budget, ramen noodles and making sure that college is getting paid for may look a little bit different than the budget that he hopes to put together in the next three or four weeks. So we've talked about food budget and where that can um, sometimes go a little bit astray if you choose to eat out on a more frequent basis. So we've talked about buying groceries. We've talked about how much that food budget ought to look like on a on a weekly basis and his housing budget instead of living by himself he was able to find a roommate that had similar interest and that he knew from from k-state from his college years so he's going to be able to cut his housing budget in, in half since there's two of them in the same apartment we've talked about transportation we've talked about all the different factors that go into to making that budget and obviously one of those major ones is housing and of course the decision my son made at this point not knowing what his career looks like in a few months or a few years, if he'll be in the same geographical area, he's choosing to rent. So by having a roommate, he's able to cut down his allocation towards housing. But he's also very understanding that he's got to work on two things when he does go to buy a house, and that's his credit. He needs a credit file. He's got to build his credit. And also he needs some money in the bank so he can hopefully make a 10 or ideally a 20% down payment when he does go to to move into his own place and buy his own house. So right now he's he's working towards what's my rainy day fund and he and I had that conversation last night. And he was he was taking a look at how much do I put into the rainy day fund every week, every month as opposed to uh when I can start my 401k with my employer, do should I max that out or should I put 4% instead of 6%? So we've had some of those conversations. He Um, wants to make sure that he's got that rainy day fund because he doesn't have that right now. He doesn't have anything close to a rainy day fund. So he wants to get 
what would be considered two months' worth of salary in that rainy day fund. And then when he's eligible for a 401K, he wants to start with that amount that he can match. So his employer, I believe, will match 3%. If my son puts in 3% of his salary, his employer will put in 3% uh, to match that. So on the surface, that becomes really a, a good plan because it's 50% of what's going in is not his money. It's quote-unquote free money. So he, he has taken the opportunity to look at that 401K plan and understand how he can maximize that right out of the gate. And then when he hopefully gets a raise, whether that's a year from now or 14 months from now, he's gonna, every time he gets a raise, he hopes to increase what his contribution is to that 401K, either 1% or 2%. So over time, hopefully he can work up to a point that he's putting – 10, 12, maybe even 14% of his paycheck into that 401k, that that savings product, to make sure that when he is ready to retire, I suspect that'll be 40 years from now or maybe even more, that uh, he's got something more than just Social Security to, to retire upon. I know with, um, I sell real estate and obviously I'm a broker, but I also coach agents around the country. And, and you would be surprised at every age, a lot of people don't necessarily have a plan and when it comes to real estate, they look at it as, I'm going to sell a couple houses a year. And really, anything you should look at as a long-term picture, as goals. So visual goals are great, especially, I mean, really at any age, but encourage your students to have have goals, like a visual goal board to where you can look at it and actually see what those next goals are, and you work towards them. Because if there is no written plan, there is no plan. Yeah, in your head, but it could be easily trumped if you have it sitting right there in front of you and you know, and that's the same thing with a budget, knowing what those numbers are each month and saying, okay, well, I just bought a car and I want to pay it off by, you know, a certain t- a time frame. Obviously, you've got to do the math. Well, how much do I have to pay to make that happen? Life in general is that way by setting goals and having a visual uh, reminder and that includes, you know, your spreadsheet with your budgeting and everything like that. That helps you get to that goal faster than just kind of floating in the wind. I mean, um, yeah, I want to retire at 55. Well, what do I have to do to do that? You know, I don't want to be 65 before I retire. Can I meet that? What would I have to do? What would I have to put into place? If your kid says, well, you know, I want to spend a year backpacking before I start a full-time job after college, well, how much do I have to save for that? Because not every mommy and daddy can pay for that for you. My kid's going to have to figure out how to work to get that done. Um, you know, things like that. Have a goal. Have a plan. Those are always really important. And I know for us, we actually, um, a lot of us have kids in that realm and that age that they need to start understanding budgets and, and how do I buy a house. So we've put together a campaign that walks you through it. It walks you through budgeting what goes into buying a house, what costs come up front, um, what they need to know in order to make that happen. We also have um, working on one for investors. So if they want to invest, um, we know a kid that um, he's bought several homes, he uses them for investments and um, doesn't actually live in any of them. He rents. So, you know, it's really all about what's your goal and making sure that you understand that. So we have that, we have that, and it actually applies to any age. Um, so it's definitely something we put a lot of thought into. We come a lot from education. We do offer to local businesses to come in and do some education to teach their um, their um, their staff how to finance um, houses. We bring in a lender, we bring in housing and credit counseling which as Jim and I were talking about during the break, have a lot of really great classes. Um, we love those guys. Um, and then we bring in, a, again, a local lender and go through the process because it's not something you do every day. We do it. We assume you know it, but we figured that, you know, that's not something everybody does every day. If you're a surgeon, I wouldn't have a clue how to do what you do. First off, I'd pass out at the sight of blood. But, um, you know, you really... We don't, you don't know what you don't know. And there's so much more that goes into it besides slapping a sign in a yard. Um, you need a plan, and this is your, your largest investment. So you want to make sure that you have someone, first off, with your investments and with purchasing a house that understands that process. Um, it's not necessarily the, the wisest idea to have the, the newbie 
having their trial run with one of your largest investments. So that comes to the same thing with an actual financial investing. Investing. So whenever we work with a client and we've gotten them under contract, the first call that they typically get is from Jim Garrison here. Um, Jim, tell them about what you go through with them as far as homeowners insurance and all the next steps as far as financially securing themselves for the future. We want to understand, and that's a very good question, Carrie. We want to understand, um, first of all, the timelines, um, obviously knowing when the, the prospective closing is, but Much more importantly, we want to understand if they've, uh, one of the most important questions is whether they've been a homeowner prior to this purchase or not. So if they're a first-time homeowner, we want to make sure we get together with them, understand um, what their budget is for the house, and um, are both both spouses, or are there two people working in the household? Is there one person working in the household? And then we dive into the homeowner's coverage and what... uh, uh, we put together a tool called an expected replacement cost tool, and that just takes the attributes of the house, including square footage, uh, number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, and we put together, here's what we expect the rebuild cost of that home to be. And sometimes that's somewhat similar to what the purchase price is, or sometimes it can be a little bit different. We just want the person to have and the buyer to have the opportunity to uh, make sure that they've got the coverage that they expect particularly full replacement cost on a structure as opposed to ACV, actual cash value. Once in a while you see that on a roof of a house. And every uh, supplier of insurance products can be a little bit different. We want to make sure that particularly the first-time home buyer understands replacement cost coverage and how important that can be in the event of a bad windstorm or a bad uh, hailstorm or particularly in the you know, more major event like a tornado or windstorm. And then we also talk about different attributes Um, different endorsements that can be added to that homeowner's policy. Um, State Farm specifically offers some endorsements to allow them to replace their HVAC unit, their hot water heater, at uh, a reduced cost out of pocket to them. So we have endorsements that can help for the sewer line between the house and the city. Sometimes and oftentimes that type of replacement would not be covered by any type of insurance product except by endorsement. So we talk about that endorsement as well. We talk about an endorsement to make sure if water backs up into the basement, a backup of sewer and drain endorsement can help make sure that they can get back on their feet again if if the pad and the carpet and maybe even some of the drywall has been damaged because of a backup of water and or sewer. Um, And there's other endorsements as well. So I, I think it's really important for any homeowner to take the time to review at least every other year their coverage with their Uh, with their provider and make sure that that's still where they want to be. Sometimes as people progress through their homeowners, um, let's call it their, their, their lifestyle and their uh, duration. Sometimes homeowners are better and and they want a higher deductible. They start with maybe a a thousand dollar deductible. And over time they say, you know what? Um, I, I understand that it's an inverse relationship. If I pick a higher deductible, then my premiums are going to be lower overall. So they're willing to self-insure. And it's just like self-insuring a higher risk on your automobile. If you go from a $250 collision deductible up to a $1,000 deductible, you're keeping money in your pocket. You're not paying as much for your insurance because you're insuring a little more of that risk yourself. So you do come out of pocket with a higher amount if you do have an accident. But if you go five or even ten years without an automobile accident, you're usually ahead by choosing that higher deductible. And it's the same with homeowner's insurance. Over time, a higher deductible will usually pay for itself. And we'll do some return on investment calculations. Does this pay for itself in three years versus does it take like eight, more like eight or ten years because the deductible's higher in the event of a, of a covered risk in a, in a claim? So those are the types of conversations that we have. And we want to make sure that the product, and particularly the endorsements, uh, makes sense, and it's something that the homeowner wants. Not every homeowner wants extra endorsements that we're going to show to them. And, it, you know, some of them are very low cost, 15 or 18 or $25 a year to cover an additional risk, which, if not covered by endorsement, may end up costing five or $6,000 to the homeowners. So particularly a, a sewer line, as we all know, on a 30- or 40-year-old house, sometimes that sewer line is invaded by 
tree roots or it collapses over time, whatever that case may be. And to get the backhoe out there and do everything needed to put in a new sewer line can be very, very expensive to the tune to four, five, or six thousand dollars. And that's really thirty to forty years old. There really isn't a sometimes to that. It's pretty much you're going to have that problem. Especially whenever you go to buy a house, that's what we always tell people is to look at the age. Uh, certain areas still have Orangeburg, which collapses, or they have um, clay tile. Clay tile. Mm-hmm. Um, those are, those are, um, they're going to be a problem at some point in your ownership, most likely. Um, roots go where there's water. So it's definitely one of those things you want to know that you've got coverage for up front. Um, and we trust our insurance carriers to educate you about that because that's outside of the realm of what we should be doing um, legally. Um, and uh, so we really trust our, our providers to educate you on that. And whenever it comes to a homeowner's a home inspection, we really um, we push for things that we know should be taking place. And when it comes to a home inspection, um, I'm pretty adamant about it. I, I think it's a, a true mistake not to have one. Um, investors, you know, if, if they're super handy and they're like, I'm going to get this thing anyway, we don't particularly worry about them. We know that they know what they're doing. But if you're not, um, I just think it's, it's a, a very um, risky move not to have one, not to have your sewer line inspected. I can't tell you... Um, how many times we've heard horror stories about people moving into a house only to find out that uh, it wasn't checked and all of a sudden they've got water in their basement. Um, And, you know, you don't ever want to flush your toilet only to find it coming back at you. So it's definitely one of those things you want to take care of. And so we're very big on making sure that you, you do inspections. There's too many unknowns. I know when Troy and I bought our house, um, it was a foreclosure and, um, it was a great house. The people that built it uh, originally were both doctors, and um, they did a fine job. But it really looked great. What we didn't realize is it had been vacant for a year. And being young, dumb homeowners for the very first time, I called not because you're, I'm calling us dumb, because we didn't have one. We did not do a homeowner's inspection. And um, so one day, Troy and I hook up a water hose to a spigot, on the outside of the house and it started shooting into our kitchen so when i say to you (laughs) that you should have a homeowner's inspect or home inspection i know this for fact because we lived it and we uh unfortunately have uh definitely experienced what that was like firsthand so Fortunately, it was an extensive damage. That was great, you know, but we do know that that spigot is off limits. So, (laughs) well, there will be no more water hoses there. But we wondered why, you know, because that's near the garden. It would totally make sense. But, yeah, we just needed a longer hose because now we got to use another side of the house. Um, So with that, you know, the whole thing about buying and and planning for your future, it's one big thing. It's It starts when your first job takes place and how to invest in your future. So, again, I'm really big on setting goals and making plans and, and looking at things and looking at at each thing that you do to set you up towards the future as an overall plan. I know when it came to Cody buying his first house, um. It was it was a great opportunity. We knew that we were going to have to do a lot of sweat equity into it um, to make sure that whenever he sold it, he made a, a nice profit. Um, and that's that's hard to do. Even being in real estate, it's hard to run across those properties that have that kind of potential. Um, so as a mom, I was nervous about him buying his first house. But at the same time, I looked at that and said, you know, if we do this right, that would give him a huge down payment on something, you know, nicer that he could and put him in a bracket that he could afford um, because you don't want to be house poor. It's it's just too hard to, to plan that way. So thanks for joining us. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor, which also happens to be here with us, Jim Garrison. And uh, we'll talk more about investing and setting up your kid for the future and yourself.
Southwest Topeka has a good neighbor. State Farm agent Jim Garrison, now at 29th and Urish. If your current insurance situation has you going around in circles, get off the roundabout and stop in and meet Jim and his wonderfully efficient staff. Let Jim Garrison give you a quote and make the Garrison comparison. He's confident that with State Farm's competitive rates, the right coverage, and his unmatched service, you'll want to make him your new insurance agent. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there, and Jim Garrison is there for you. Northeast of the roundabout at 29th and Urish. Thanks for joining us again. This is Carrie Brown Berger, owner of Realty Executives Preferred Advisors, and you're listening to Real Estate 101. If you haven't checked out our website, go out and check it out. TopekaHomeAdvisors.com covers all of Northeast Kansas. It includes the Heartland, which is Kansas City, Lawrence, Topeka, and Manhattan MLS. Um, so it gets you more than even Zillow. You can find anything you're looking for that is actively on the market on those four MLSs, which covers, again, all of Northeast Kansas. If you're looking to buy or sell, also give us a call at 785-213-5188. And if you're just planning ahead and want to learn a little bit more about the process, shoot us an email because we've put together a lot of really great educational campaigns that literally walk you through what it's like to buy a house and what you need to know. And... More importantly, right now, I'm here with Jim Garrison of State Farm. Jim, let's talk about tips and tricks that you've learned in the process with with your own kid. You know, I think going back to the budget, and you've heard us say that word several times, but the planning that Carrie mentions and the budgeting process really gives each of us as potential homeowners or current homeowners the opportunity to understand where's my money going? Am I I truly putting 28 or 30 percent of my uh, household income towards housing, or has it become more than that? Carrie used a great term. Being house poor is no fun. When you're in a house that maybe is a, is a little bigger uh, than expected or has become uh, more of a, a maintenance-related issue because it's older and the house inspections weren't done, if the inspections weren't done and then all of a sudden you have to replace the siding or the roof, or the sewer line. Those are big, big expenditures that can really change your budget in a hurry. So I think the right thing, or what's been most helpful to a lot of people, is find a tool that they're very comfortable with, whether it's QuickBooks, and they track their budget that way on a desktop computer, or there's many applications out there. I know my son and some of his friends have an application called Mint.com. While I'm not endorsing that, it does certainly allow him to track all of his expenditures on his credit card or debit card and then at the end of the month it gives him reports as to where he, where he is in comparison to the month before and how that compares to his goals so i think the right app on uh, somebody's phone can be very very helpful and then it takes that perseverance to stick with it too and see well i was i spent more money last month than i expected and why was that did i eat out more or was it because of a an expenditure on my car. Did I have to take my car to the shop and that cost me 400 bucks, Or was it other reasons? It's back to school and I bought clothes for the kids. So there's many things, obviously, that impact a budget. But overall, and particularly if you have many years worth of data, you start to see some trends that might develop. And if those trends are positive trends that show that, hey, I'm putting an extra 50 or an extra $100 a month into my Roth IRA that I wasn't even planning on doing, then those are certainly positive trends. But if it's trends that show more outflow and towards something that you really don't have anything to show for it, i.e. more clothes or eating out more often, then maybe that's a trend that needs to be evaluated and and seen if it can be reversed. So, Because like you said earlier, if people can retire at 55 or even 65, that's, that's a good place to be. And a lot of times life happens and all of a sudden it is age 65 and there's not quite as much in the retirement fund as one would hope, and really the only alternative at that point is to, to keep working. And sometimes that can, be, that can be tough when somebody's really thought about it and wants to retire at age 65, and they're not able to. Absolutely. So if you start investing whenever you're younger and really encouraging your, your, um, your children to do that, it's amazing how much you're setting them up for their future. I know growing up, Mine didn't. So, and I came from a family that my dad was a farmer, my mom's a teacher. Um, it wasn't taught to them, which is kind of strange because my grandfather was by far the tightest man I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, he, when he retired, he had just tons of investment properties. And, and, you know, people just don't stop to think to teach that to the children. Um, 
so obviously, you know, it's definitely something that not every um, not every family passes down or, or it really even knows. And again, we do have a campaign that we've set up that, that explains budgeting. It, it explains the process of buying a house. But we also have in there a budget spreadsheet that we've put together that does a lot of the calculations for you. So if you're really into Excel, shoot us an email, preferredadvisorsteam at gmail.com. We can certainly send that over to you. You just plug in what your bills are. It'll calculate it out for you. It has monthly tabs um, and things like that. Um to just basically help you get an overall picture. And if you're into apps, um, which I am, mint.com, I know we use QuickBooks for everything, um, and it's very user-friendly. And you look at that and you think, okay, um, maybe I should cut that out, you know, things along those lines. It's amazing how much you figure out how much you eat out, too. It's it, That'll catch you. I know I looked at mine and I was like, I am not showing my husband that. Because I will never hear the end of it. Um, so, you know, you go to work, you haven't made lunch. It's, it just happens. So say a consumer wants to look at their homeowner's insurance. What would your recommendation be? We get together. We take a look at their current coverage. And I don't I don't ever ask what their current premium is. I just want to see if they have the amount of coverage that's appropriate for the house. Sometimes if they've lived there for a number of years, there might have been an upward creep in the amount of coverage on the structure itself. So we'll take a look at that. And we'll look at endorsements that they currently have, whether it's with a competitor or currently. uh, And we'll take a look if they've been with my agency for 10 years and they had a certain endorsement 10 years ago, they may or may not need it anymore. Or there may be other endorsements that currently make more sense to their situation. So I think that review of a homeowner's policy is really, really important in today's world and understanding all the discounts that somebody may be eligible for because we want to make sure people get all of the discounts they're entitled to, absolutely. One of the things people don't um, recognize is having a um, an alarm system that gives you a discount living close to a fire department. Um, or isn't it like the hydrant that is the important thing, not the department so much as the hydrant itself? You know, that comes down to the individual insurance company, how they monitor that. Some companies use zip codes and just the overall experience ratings a number of losses in particular areas or how close you are to a fire hydrant or to a firehouse, like you say. So every company does that part a little bit different in how they rate a potential risk given on the location of the house. So really good point there. And at the end of the day, what really makes the most difference is the discounts, having the auto and the homeowners together. That obviously lends itself to some very good discounts. Um, The age of the house protection systems that are in place, like you said, and the roof. If you're replacing a roof, please consider an impact-resistant roof because that's a very big savings with most companies and particularly with with State Farm right now. Absolutely. So, Jim, if they wanted to get a hold of you, how would they do that? Give me a call at the office, 272-0332, or my email address, jim at jimgarrison.biz, or my cell phone is 220-0804. We're right at the roundabout at 29th and Uri, so please, by all means, stop on by as well. Absolutely. And you guys have, what's the restaurant right next to you? Have a classic bean. You can drive through or walk in. And Dr. Kathy Kane is there as well with her pediatrician practice. So if you're hungry, you could just go pick up a sandwich and eat while Jim's talking to you. And if you're looking to buy or sell, be sure and give us a call at Realty Executives Preferred Advisors. And our phone number is 785 785- Two one three five one eight eight. Shoot us an email at preferredadvisorsteam at gmail.com or visit our website, topekahomeadvisors.com. Thank you for listening to Real Estate 101 with the Carrie Brown team from Realty Executives Preferred Advisors. Tune in again next Sunday at 11 o'clock for Real Estate 101.